In my last video of KL Bird Park Tour, we've taken a closer look at Great Hornbill and we've learned how to identify its gender and we've watched the bird show as well as witnessed the stock and pelican feeding at Zone 4. So this time, let's explore on flightless bird like ostrich, emu, southern cassowary and then we'll check out on the flamingo pond and meet the most beautiful bird in here which is the grey crown cranes. So let's go! Weather today is quite gloomy but I'm lucky that it hasn't rained yet otherwise it will be a bad day for us. So I think I'm a little bit lucky because the ostrich is currently inside the feeding cage. So let's go and check it out. Oh the ostrich is coming, it's coming, it's coming. I'm sorry but there's no food for you. There's no food. Thank you. Yeah. Let me just show you guys how tall is the ostrich. So just now it stretches the neck. It could reach out until here guys. Right now it's I think it's looking for the food. But we don't have any right now. Let me just read some fun fact about the ostrich, okay? The height of the ostrich is around 1.8 to 2.7 meters and they are the largest and the heaviest bird in the world and they originate from the central and the southern Africa and their natural habitat is actually in a dry area and sandy region of Africa and semi-desert that have vegetation less than one meter and they feed based on fruit, seeds and succulent that can be found in the desert area and the small invertebrates and they have only two toes and they have a very strong and powerful legs that are used to run at a very high speed up to 70 kilometers okay so just imagine 70 kilometers let's say if you are being chased by an ostrich just know that it's not a good thing for you so that's why they are put in a cage and because ostrich is the largest bird in the world they also have the largest egg in the world and the nest is built on the ground by the male ostrich who also incubates the eggs and look after the chick If you guys can see at my back over there is actually a mule. They originates from Australia and this is the second largest bird in the world after ostrich and their natural habitat is in dry areas such as semi-desert, grassland and woodland and for a mule, they eat seeds, insects, fruits as well as small invertebrates and for a mule, they are farmed actually for their meat, for their skin and their feathers. At my back over there is the height chart of the bird and the largest bird in the world is Moa which is already extinct and right now the largest bird in the world is ostrich and the next one is also already extinct in comparison to human maybe our height the highest one could reach up to 2 meters but myself I'm 1.64 meters and yeah you can see over there they are very tall the ostrich is very tall by the way I thought the second largest should be a new but in this diagram after ostrich then is flamingo so let's go and check out flamingo pond so right now at my back here is actually the southern cassowary this bird is actually native to Papua New Guinea and some part of mainland in Australia it feeds on seeds insects and some small plants the cassowary is kind of a shy bird it only goes out early in the morning or in the late evening to find food and it could be dangerous when they feel intimidated they can kick their enemies with their sharp claws on their toes and it could be dangerous and can be fatal if you get attacked by the southern cassowary so for the southern cassowary the feather looks similar to emu but they have their head and their neck is in blue color and they have like some dangling I don't know what do they call that some dangling things underneath their necks in red color they are very beautiful I mean they have crowns I would call it crown but I don't know what's the official terms for that but yeah if you can see their crown is in orange and yellow color but in their head the blue color they have two tones one is the lighter blue and another like navy blue and then that dangling thing is in red at the back of this ostrich and emu cage they are actually parrots cage i'm gonna go inside and feed the parrots i hope the parrots are still hungry because otherwise if they are full then we cannot feed them so 
Let's go and check them out. Lore is feeding. By the way guys, before feeding the lorries, we need to wash our hands first to minimize the spread of the germs. So these are the birds that you can find here in the world of parrots. Ini apa susu? Susu madu. Susu yogurt ke kan? Berapa eh? Dua ringgit. Oh, semua datang. Semua tak nak, dah kenyang. Dah kenyang. Dah, dah. Bagi orang lain pula. Dah habis, habis, habis. Habis. Hello. Kali cakap lah hari ni. Hello. It's at the top over there. Usually kokotu. What is this? Blue fronted Amazon? Is it? Yeah, blue fronted Amazon. See guys, I already know the name of the bird. <laughs> Electus parrot. Come on, show me your face. What are you guys doing? Okay, so this is Umbrella Cockatoo. They are native to Maluku in Indonesia. They have white feathers. This one up here is Molokan Cockatoo. So if we can see, they have a slight red tin on their feathers. And this Cockatoo originates from Northern Maluku in Eastern Indonesia and the natural habitat is, is in the dense and lowland forest below 1000 meters this one on top of here is pesky parrot they are native to papua new guinea and they have grey head and neck with red feather on their body next to the wall of parrot is the oriental bird aviary in zone 4 This is the black hornbill and it is native to Peninsula Malaysia, Sumatra, Brunei and Indonesia. It is kind of an uncommon bird found in the low forest area and swamp area. I've completed my tour in zone 3 and 4 and now I'm making my way back to zone 1. This is the great hornbill just now. Hi. I've been inside here for close to 2 hours so right now I'm gonna take a break and get myself an ice cream. Kunutu peach flavor. Peach rose. Berapa eh? Lima setengah. Tutup pukul berapa eh? Tama ni tujuh. Pukul tujuh eh? Okay. Lagi tak boleh. Okay. Terima kasih. Okay, kat mana yang selamat daripada burung? Okay, so I'm going to sit here because um, this one is safe. They have rooftop and this one, it has lesser contamination. <laughs> By the way guys, I gotta tell you that the last time I went here, I won't calculate the one that I went in last October. Like the last time that I came here, I think when I was 
seven years old or in kindergarten with my brother. We came here with my parents and my siblings and at that time we were very small. I only came back here last year in October when Malaysia already in PPN phase 4 if, if I was not mistaken. So we took the chance to come out with my nephew to show him around the park and birds at that time. He's just one years old and he barely recognized the animal. He can't even talk at that time. And right now he's already able to make bird sounds and all. And I think we should come here again before he reaches three years old because uh, when you're three years old you have to pay for kids ticket but if you come here with kids less than three years old the entrance is free anyway this is a really great place to explore the animal and the park especially the birds because they are all just roaming freely on the road on the tree and you can really take a look at them at a very close distance you can also take the chance to feed them this is a really nice experience to come here this is the stock but over there if you guys can see the feather is red normally only the flamingo color is red but this one the stock is also red i think it's pink flamingo is down there so maybe i'll take a better video from that side so this is the flamingo pond and you can see over there the feather is red it's pink and usually in natural habitat the pink is because of the food that they eat the red prawn but here in the pond as you can see it's all green so it's filled with algae so i don't know what kind of food that they eat over there i can't stay here for long because as you guys can see over there at the top there are there are a lot of salt on the tree so i don't want to get any more bird droppings i'll just walk around the pond to go from the at the bottom side over there so you guys can have a closer view of the stock so we are now in zone number one this is the flamingo pond and we're gonna walk down okay so they have another pond fish pond over there that we can feed the fish so when i came last time i already feed them along with my niece and today let me see if i can record any video otherwise i'll just show you guys the video that i recorded back then okay You can buy the fish food for one ringgit but you need to use 50 cents coin. So make sure you guys bring a spare change before you come here. Otherwise, you will need to walk for a bit to exchange the money at the nearby kiosk inside KL Bird Park and you can also get the fish food over there. It could get a little bit crowded in the weekend but since I come here during the weekday so there won't anybody here. are the birds that you can find here and the duck as well as the Indian blue people and the bull bull I don't know how do you call that burung merba and black swan but today I don't see any black swan <laughs> This is hibiscus guys, our national flower. Okay, so this is the other side of the flamingo pond. Hi. Hi. So I don't know what's the name but I know this is an ibis. What happened over there? What happened? I don't know what happened. Oh, I thought the bird is dead but it's actually resting I think. But it's a very unique way of resting. Oh, Angsa, that's a goose. So by the way, now I know what's the name of this bird. It's called Bangau Kendi or Kettle Egret. Surprisingly, it is very small. It's smaller than a chicken. And that's the flamingo. So you guys can see some of them has red color. Because of their diet, they eat the red shrimp and the blue green algae. 
so that's why their feather is red and there are plenty of them actually the yellow bill stalk is also red in color i think this is the most beautiful bird here it is the gray crown crane and it has golden spiky crest with red and white fascia skin and a bright red inflatable throat pouch as well as gray and white feathers it is native to africa and it is categorized as an endangered species that's all for this episode before i end this video let's reflect upon surah al-an'am chapter 6 verse 38 Which means, and there is no creature or within the earth or bird that flies with its wings, except that they are communities like you. We have not neglected in the register a thing. Then, unto their Lord they will be gathered. In this verse, Allah tells us that He created each animal in this world to be a part of community. It's the same for birds and it's the same for human. All of us belong to a community, to an ummah. Therefore, let us ask ourselves today, when was the last time that we participate in activity together with our own community? When was the last time we meet them? And when was the last time we took part in community events? And when was the last time we gave back to our own community? If all this while we have only lived ourselves and we have neglected our community, let's take this chance to get to know them, to get involved and to contribute back to our community. Until then, in the next episode, I'll take you guys to explore more birds in KL Bird Park. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Thank you so much for watching this video until the end. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.